Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. It's uh, January 9th. No, it's not. Is it January 9th? Yeah, yes, it, it is. is. It is January 9th, 2023. I'd like to call to order at uh, 636. It's a lot different than the olden days. Nowadays, we have um, technology to deal with. Before is much easier. Anyways, uh, first order of business will be approval of minutes from December 12th and December 19th, 2022, and also minutes from January 3rd, 2023. We didn't have a meeting January. Hmm? We didn't have a meeting January 3rd. Okay, no January 3rd. So, so I have a motion we approve the minutes from... I thought you said you weren't going to talk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, move, I move we uh, approve the minutes from December 12th and December 19th. <laughs> you have to second now. Second. <laughs> I motion. second it. <laughs> motion made and seconded uh, to approve the minutes as presented for December 12th and December 19th, 2022. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, we have a 3-0 on minutes from 12-12 and 12-19-2022. Next up is the culvert updates. George, and we have George is to talk about that. George Emery. George? So we got this culvert assessment done by the FERCOG, and they came out pretty good. They said most of our culverts in town were, were in really good shape. There was a few that they recommended on some stuff that we wanted to do. So we went and took a look at some of the ones. There's one on Garage Road, one on North Silver Lane, Grippo Cross Road, there's two of them. Uh, there's one on Old Amherst by Roy's and Cross Mountain Road. There is one there and Russell Street. So there's a couple of them that are pretty easy to fix. Um, you know, some head wall stuff, some ends and inlets, outlets that are plugged up. That we've gone and cleaned out. Um, since then, there is a few that are probably gonna be a little harder than others to, to take care of and more expensive because we might have to go up in size on them. Some of these culverts, some of the ones that they're talking about that have water right up to the top of them are in the drainage ditches. Um, so the beds of the ditch are pretty much as high as about halfway up the pipe. So really the water has nowhere to drain. It doesn't drain very fast. The water is moving, so there is, there are, there is flow there, but it's just the height of the whole drainage ditch is the same, so pretty hard to do much there. I mean, we can go into the inlet side, the outlet side, and dig a big sump there. So, you know, if any water comes, heavy water comes through the pipe, at least it'll have a place to go into the sump if, if that's what we recommend or you guys recommend us do. But um, there's a few areas that are pretty tough to get into with an excavator or, or a small excavator. So it would be just be a little tricky in a couple of them so but other than that most of them are in pretty good shape got some uh manhole covers that we got to replace in a couple of them that are missing some grades and stuff that they that they recommended so it was a pretty good report so i i think george is underestimating what the FERCOG said um, so there's 400 there's 412 culverts in the town in basins, yeah. um, and that not including um, ones along 116 that's under state highway control yep. and the FERCOG I was trying to get the exact word but 82% were considered good, good 
9% were considered fair, 5% were f poor, 4% were critical. But more, 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 more importantly, um, the FERCOG wanted to point out the exceptional overall condition of, and, and George, you should be very proud of the work that you and your crew have done on these culverts. But the, the FERCOG was, um, went out of their way commented, commenting about the condition of the culverts. And that's a testament to the work that you've done and your crews have done over the last years, 10 years or so. So nice job. Thanks. And, and a lot of times we don't, we don't get other, we hear about when you knock down mailboxes and stuff like that but a lot of times we don't have you we don't have an outside group comes in and and when they're all done they talk about what what a good shape the, the infrastructure is and in. so good job very good job um, and and basically that this is something that the FERCOG Sunderland um, we, if you told me before it was started, and probably if you talked to you, you you knew we had probably a heck of a lot of culverts and stuff. But if they said exactly 412, you probably would have said, okay. Yeah, when I got this report, I'm like, whoa, 412? I didn't realize there were that many. <laughs> I knew there was a lot, but. Well, I, I, it, it's a lot, George, because in in in. A, it's knowing where they are, um, and it's maintaining, and it's maintaining the the structures. You know, making sure that they're clean. But now, so now, did you, were you able to put this online, Jeff, on on a um, web page? I didn't know which web page to put it on. On the highway department, you think, or conservation? Um. I have not, but I will. I, 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 I think you can put on either in either place, um, but I for right now I would put it up under the the newer stuff that you can just link right off from the home page. Um, but but a top, I mean, the the tops the the when you're looking at the assessment definitions, they number the culverts. Um, the size of the diameter of the pipe, the material is the material is plastic, metal, cast iron, clay, concrete, or other. The, uh, um, the a description of the structure and anything surrounding the inlets, the the the, the t materials around it, the type of crossing is it you know is it round, elliptical, open bottom, box, or drop inlet, the percentage of blockage if there is blockage, the grade of the culvert. Uh, the free fall, submerged, uh, the stream, you know, stream crossing, constricted. I mean, they go through, th there's, there's a number, erosion, sediments. It's, it's really a pretty in-depth um, study. And so hopefully Jeff will put, that, Jeff will put it on, um, and it talks about uh, the areas, like, and George kind of went to Griffel Cross, North Silver Lane, Garage, but we have... There's probably a half a dozen that really need to be addressed. Yeah, we checked, we checked all those out, so we've got the list of them, at least the ones that we can really start on in the springtime. Yeah. We're building a couple head walls and, and uh, digging out some inlets and outlets and getting the floor, 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 floor. Yeah, so, so again, I, I just wanted to, uh, and again, uh, Nathaniel or Crystal, you have any questions or no, I don't. It was, a, it was great work. I mean, I'm not super surprised that our town has that many culverts because it's a big swamp, but, you know. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that most of them are in good condition and appreciate that, so thank you. <coughs> so we, they, there's, when, 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 it, when the, final, the uh, culvert assessment is put up, um, they actually have a link um, that'll, that's within the report that you can go and you can if you want to, it has an online map, and in the map it also talk 
it, it also has pictures of the culvert and stuff. So if anybody, if you want to go see what, if you have any culvert next to your houses or what their condition are, you can go. But it's also a tool that we can use. The mapping is a, a tool that George has and that he can use going forward with that. And now we can, and when, when he comes in town meeting next year, this year, and ask for money, we'll be able to document everything and why we're doing it. Just, you know, so good. Anything else, George? That's all I got. Jeffrey, any questions? No. All right. Thank you, George. Thanks, George. All right, man. Have a good one. Thanks. All right. Next up is the mowing contract update. Jeff? Yeah. So <clears throat> I think November, December, we voted to uh, renew the contract for the third year. Um, the contractor came back and said, hey, fuel prices are up, maintenance costs are up. You just put in a new early education playground that I now need to hand mow around where I could ride before. Um, and said that it was gonna take about an extra 45 minutes to an hour uh, per mow um, due to the, the early education playground. Um, so he requested um, an increase of 10%, which is $1,518.98. And that would bring... That's for the year. That's for the year. Okay. It would bring the total to 16,000, from 15,189 to 16,708. So it didn't seem like an unreasonable request. Um, we've heard, we, I have received no complaints um, and only positive things about the cleanups and the work. So um, I, I don't think it's an unreasonable request. So I wanted to bring it before the board. In the past we've had, in the past, it seems like every year we would, we would get concerns about uh, ball fields not being mowed, school not being mowed, whatever. So I, we there problems at the cemetery. Um, we have not been hearing that. No, I mean everything's kept up well. So it, as long as the contract, and this is the third year, so we'll be bidding it out at the end of this year. Yep. Okay. <coughs> um, I don't have a problem with that. Sounds like a very reasonable increase given yeah. both of those factors. Either one of those factors would warrant an increase and in, you know, I mean, I know what gas costs to put in my car. <laughs> I can't imagine filling up right. the motor. And, and just the addition of that playground, well, you know, it just requires a different type of mowing now. And, yep. and it's not like if we decided not to go with him and wouldn't bid it out, we wouldn't be getting the same prices we did last time. We'd be getting all of their bids having increased by at least 10%, if not yeah. 20 or 30. So yeah. I'm, I'm on board with, with that. So you want a motion, Jeff? Yes, please. So I motion we accept the increase of $1,518.98 to be added to the yearly fee. I second that motion. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to uh, enter into a third, enter into the third year at the increase at the additional cost. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero. Thank you. Next up is the scheduled poll here. Yes, we got a request just from Eversource this time to um, put a new poll uh, on Hadley Road by Ferry Road. Due to increasing is it replacing a pole or just so, um, oh is it equipment oh see i thought it was for or underground maybe i read it wrong maybe um you would know better than that yeah <laughs> going down route 47 <laughs> since hadley two yeah. larger 1000 yeah. mcm like copper cables will be installed you get in the new manhole road, so is that underground there. oh right, yeah, yeah. There's a road there that goes out to the river. Cast yes. yes. Okay. It goes under. Okay, that makes sense. Right. So oh, right, because that's where the old ferry used to be. So 150 a, a years pole ago. hearing for an underground, not pole. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I'm saying that it says. <coughs> <coughs> not 
So, well, it's still, an, uh, it's for underground cable. Two larger copper cables will be installed in a new manhole and duct conduit system. Is this an upgrade of existing facilities or is this adding it to... So, to me, this sounds like they're going to, going down Ferry Road, they're going to do some precast manholes, some more conduit. Is Ferry Road where the cables cross the Connecticut? Yes. Oh, okay. So yeah. Probably that road going out there is Ferry Road. Road. Ferry Road's in town. Yeah. That's yeah. the northern ferry, right? Southern. There's a, a ferry further north? There's one up by Williams Farm. Yeah. There's one down by Telegas. Well, old oh, Telegos right. This Pack. is yeah. the, this is the, right, the right. one down by Telegas. Yeah. This is Sorry. the one down by Thank the you. south end of town. So basically, they're going to be, I would just double check with them. It sounds like they're going to be digging up the road and putting in, right? Is that what you're reading? So from this drawing, I'm seeing, and again, only because I'm really having trouble seeing here. I'm thinking this is Hadley Road, right? This is Route 47 here? Yep. Yes. So it looks like they're coming from here crossing the road they can go right down the road and then they're going to go down ferry road right it looks like they already have a, a and they already there. have stuff there yeah. it, it sounds like they're going to put in some precast man manholes and increase the number of um, conduits going out there can they do a horizontal drill to do that no or to go under the road yeah. No. So, so I, I would guess if if that if you could, Jeff, I would I would I would talk to them. But if the, if they are going to be digging up the entire road to replace the conduit and stuff, I would. And again, they would come in, and I think I think we'd want George here mm -hmm. because George would probably George would probably tell them how how to cross the, the specifications are for. Uh, for restoring the road. So they're going to be digging up Hadley Road for a section? No, then, do, do everything's going to be done on Ferry Road. Okay. Because it looks like it crosses Hadley no, Road. No, see, that's right here, Tommy. I yeah. think they're crossing 47. Mm, they could they're be. running down. The so road. they, they got to they talk they gotta talk to George. Right. Yeah. This part here, that's dirt road. Yeah. Well, it matters, though, because... Well, I know, but I'm just saying that's a lot easier. It's this here that I can't tell for sure if they're digging up across 47. Are there any houses on Ferry Road, or is that just for the... What's that? Not is there any houses on that road there, no. or is that just... That's all just the power No, line I mean, there's there's two houses that abut it. Okay, yeah. but those are all unhappy themselves, though. Well, their driveways are off of 47 Hadley Road, yeah. Okay. okay. So is the question when we're going to schedule the hearing? Is that the main question for today? Yes. Okay. And if you'd like, I mean, this isn't, <clears throat> making the decision of when to schedule isn't a long thing. So if you want me to talk to them first and schedule it at the next meeting, depending on their answers and yeah. about tearing up the road, we can, so I could certainly put it on the yeah. next agenda. Yeah, and, and, I would, I would also, as Crystal and Nathaniel are saying, if they if they are planning on on digging across yeah, ask them if they are if they're if they are you know going to dig across Hadley Road forty seven as well. Yeah, because I don't see a pole location. No, I don't either. I just see the manhole. Yeah, right. they're moving. It looks to me like they're moving the hole from 1569 they're, to 1570 and then going underground yeah. across the road. Yeah, they, they're, yeah, so. And also. Can you, if, if that's what they're looking at doing, can you um, also talk to them 
about um, putting a, 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 a set of, and they may already do it, but a set of um, conduit there also so that they wouldn't have to dig it up again if something fails under there so you can put spare conduit so so I don't know how many I don't know how many how many conduits they're going to need to go across the road it's probably three three or six or nine but if they could have another set of three so this is saying install four yeah you know what I mean right yeah believe me when I was working for Comcast as an installer whenever I saw an open conduit that contractor was my favorite general contractor because they left me and, open. And, and again, I, I, I know, and, and again, I mean, if you're, you know, if they come in, we can ask them. We may, I mean, we may ask them to, to put flow fill around the conduit so it's a, more of a stable base so it's not going to come back and have a bump there either. We're, we're used to having bumps in our roads, Baltazar. Um, I still want to put up my sign. Thank you, Baltazar. The speed bumps. On North Main Street. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. So we can schedule it, schedule it, and we can talk to them. Okay. But uh, but I, as you can tell, them we're going to uh, probably the board's going to ask them about spare conduit and, and about if they want to make a concrete duct paint so as not to uh, cause a road to ever end up being uh, a whoopty there. Yeah. Okay. So then I would. Probably want to next week. Well, you got to you got to put it on the. You don't you ha that's going to have to be notice. Don't they have to put it in the paper? Yeah, but I think first you decide what night and then they yeah. notice, right? So yeah, just you want to go with like three weeks out then. Give us time to do the notice and ask the questions, or. Yeah, I'm just trying to. Sorry, look at the calendar. Next week is the 17th then the 23rd and then the 30th yep 30th sounds good okay yeah that's fine great uh, oh, i was gonna say why are we 17th but because of martin luther king yes yep. yep okay yes thank you all right um uh, accept donation yes uh the town received a very generous donation from an anonymous source um, basically just saying hey we know that the town gets chapter 90 funds for roads and we know that there could be complete streets for sidewalks but you know if, if there's something that's smaller than a hundred thousand dollar you know grant application or something um, we want to help support the town for those smaller projects. So any sort of infrastructure needs um, that, that this money can go to, um, we want to give it to the town. So, you know, I think roads, sewers, um, sidewalks, Excellent. buildings. So I, I also started drafting some guidelines based on the Riverside Park guidelines. Um, so I don't know if you want to accept the funds and then not spend any until you've had a chance to review the guidelines no let's accept it and then then we just hold it we just know it's there until we get the yep. guidelines okay yep okay you need to vote on that or is that yes please so i make a motion we accept a donation to the infrastructure or the soon to be infrastructure gift is that what you're going to call it yeah infrastructure gift I second that motion. Okay, motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Um, and thank you to the anonymous donation. And, and, and I guess also, Jeff, is uh, while, while we're talking about it, um, I know we're, we're going to try to do something with, you know, the FERCOG looking at the... Um, um, sidewalks on plum tree but I, uh, we asked George a few years ago can you can you just follow up with George and see if he's done any any additional thinking about that 
and again, I, I just go, whenever I go down Plum Tree, I just see so many people walking on that road. It's just, it's mind boggling. So. And, and, I, and, I, and when I look at it, I think, you know, the suggestion was to go from 116 down to North Plain Road for right now. To the bridge, I think, yeah. Yeah, that, that looks like a pretty straight shot. Yeah, it wouldn't have been that hard. No so, point. I actually looked at that. And going from 116 to roughly the bridge, yeah. all the poles are on one side of the road. So it doesn't even involve going right. around poles and stuff. The only question I would have, and again, you have to get, you have to actually get to that point before you look more into it is there is that farm field yep. and the sidewalk would be easiest is on that side yeah and what type of damage would a tractor going in and out of that farm field potentially do to a sidewalk yep yep but that that's the only place that even you know at a quick glance is you know something you got to figure out so so can can we ask George to start looking at, and maybe you can help, what the road layout is inside that that area, and 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 see what what the road layout is compared to uh, what's actually there. Mm -hmm. And and maybe if maybe if we need to use some ARPA money for that, we could, uh, you know, if you if you wanted to look at a survey or just to get a. They, yeah, they, well, they may be able to. They may be able just to, to do it. You know, just to do it on paper. They don't. You know what I mean? Yep. All right. Yeah. Let's see if we can move that forward. Past the bridge, the poles jump back and forth yeah. many times. And that's that's what I was kind of looking at also. But it's actually, you know, it. You could either go. On the other side, because you want the sidewalks to be four, at least I think four feet wide, right? But if you look on the other, you can either go, the poles look like they're more than four feet off the road also. Take a look. Next time you drive well, no. down there. Yeah, they are. Some places they are, some places they are. Yeah, take it. When, ne ne next time you go down that road. Okay. Okay? Okay. Every day. I know. <laughs> Twice a day. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Um, first look at FY24 capital request. Yep. So, um, I think. I think the Capital Planning Committee is meeting in two weeks, um, and I'm going to send them this so that they can start reviewing, but I'll just list the project and their proposed prices, and if you want me to go into any more detail, happy to do that. Uh, the final year of the truck lease for highway, uh, $27,206.48. There is a request for a single axle dump truck for highway. Uh, it's estimated at 275,000. Um, right now, everybody George has talked to said, we have no 2023 vehicles and we're not expecting any more vehicles until 2024. So <laughs> if you want something, get your name on the list. Um, I asked him to look into financing options similar to what we did with the current truck lease. So my guess is it's going to be, you know, a seventh or a tenth of that every year um, if we go that route. He is also requesting a vibratory roller and trailer to help compact um, asphalt at, when they're doing patching and things like that. That's uh, 33000 the library has their annual HVAC um, repair capital request for 14500 And then the second phase of the carpet replacement at 37000 which is the remainder of the library and the staff areas. Um, they would like to do it this year, but it's not as urgent as the children's room, so they said if we need to push it off for a year, they could they could manage. Um, the police requested uh, three thousand dollars for fo floor cleaning and ceiling, which I believe has not been done in I think the chief said since he's gotten here, so maybe six years. Um, 
So just repairing all that. Uh, the fire department is estimating um, $200,000 to upgrade the HVAC at the public safety complex. That would be, um, you know, moving to mini splits, getting away from renewables. Again, the hope is that we apply for a green communities grant and the state pays for a large chunk of that. Um, but I mean, the, it hasn't even been designed yet. We're still figuring out um, what, what the load, that, what, what the, what we need to know in order to get size the, the. So, the so back on, on one second on before on, on the highway, on the vibratory roller, mm -hmm. is is there a reason why we wouldn't partner with a local community? Yes. So okay. I spoke to George about that, and what he said is, it is, it is in high demand, and so we aren't able to get it when we need it. Is my understanding is that he's tried. Okay. But that doesn't mean, and maybe that was just for borrowing. It doesn't mean that, hey, if Leverett has one, it's hard to borrow it. If we pair, pair with Waitley, then it's half as much, and we don't have to compete with all the other towns. Maybe that's. And 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 I would say, how often how often are we going to use the vibrant? Because it's going to be on a trailer, right? Because we're buying a trailer too. So how often are are they you? How long? How often is it used, you know? And and the saying like is so. You couldn't say if you go with another town and you want to use it and say okay every other week for the month of May, June, and July. Or March, April, May, that. Because yeah. we probably and again I and again I. I and I understand you have to get another department to go go in with you, but we do the same thing with uh, over the bank mower. We when we we had four communities that that use the over bank mower, so if we did two communities, and again it's just mac, maximize trying to maximize our our equipment. Yep. And and again, I I don't know if we would we be using it four weeks in a row. Probably not. Well I, well, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's let's just let's see yeah. what we can do with that. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Sorry, sorry, I went back on that. No. But. No, no, no. Um, the replacement of the front steps of this building and refinishing the wood floors. Uh, sorry, front step replacement was estimated at forty thousand. Floor refinishing at fifty thousand. Probably going to have to revisit that because I don't think it includes things like moving everything out, storing everything, finding a temporary place, unless we do it over. There, there are some things to figure out. It might be a little bit more than that. Um, for the elementary school, we have uh, the second to last year of the exterior rim band replacement for 9750 an oil tank replacement for 195,000 and mini splits for the elementary school library for 11,000. Okay. So the total with the single the full cost of the single axle dump truck is about 895,000. So without it, six hundred and twenty-five thousand. Um, we have one hundred and twenty-four thousand eight hundred eighty-six that will be available in the capital stabilization override. Um, but that's <laughs> probably not going to cover it. Only seven hundred thousand dollars more. You know. Yeah. So anyway, I um, yeah, I'll say, I'm going to send this uh, email this out to the capital planning committee and answer questions between now and the meeting. But I wanted to okay. nope, that's fine. Give you guys a, a preview as well. Okay, not a problem.
I thought we were, we're we were looking at using ARPA for the uh, for the oil tank at the school. Um, we are we were looking at using ARPA. What I suggested is the same thing as last year: is put in the capital request, and then the capital committee and select board can okay. decide That's the appropriate. Yep. So those are the capital requests. Okay. Any questions? Um, ARPA requests public safety facade. I thought we talked about this already. We did talk about this, um, but the contractor so. came back and said, hey, our quote didn't include prevailing wage. Um, Sorry. But they wouldn't do it for that price. It was, a, it was, a, it was an estimate. It wasn't a signed contract, so we can't. Silly Make them. Um, so they got another estimate um, from the people who were actually creating the sign for um, an additional about fifteen hundred dollars. The total price would go from four thousand ninety six dollars and thirty cents to five thousand six hundred and eleven dollars. Was this something we got bids on, or was this something that we were just going with a single? It, it was under ten thousand dollars, so we were just talking to local tradespeople, and yeah. I was just curious if you had other bids to compare that new price to or not. So the original contract, what did he say? Uh, the original contractor um, more than doubled their price, and so they went with this person. They they thought they preferred to go with this bidder. Okay, so even with his increase, it sounds like he's still coming in lower than the other. Yeah. Okay. All right, that makes sense to me. Yep. And I'm all 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 kinds of a fan of having prevailing wage be paid. So. Not even a choice. For us. <laughs> okay, so we have a. You're looking for a motion for fifty six eleven. Yes, please. Is that the final price, or is that subject to change? Uh, that that is the quote that we have. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for fifty six eleven. I motion we appropriate fifty five thousand six hundred eleven dollars from ARPA funds for sign and facade work on the public safety complex. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff three zero. Thank you. Um, say the um, you have the uh, Riverside Park. Yes. So um, one of the things that came out after we had posted the agenda was um, the final information about the bidders for the Riverside Park restroom project. Um, just a reminder for anybody who's watching, uh, last year town meeting appropriated $166,500 in CPA funds to renovate the restrooms. Uh, we went out to bid. The low bidder was Eastern General Contractors, um, and they were significantly lower than the other bidders um, to the point where I, I feel confident in awarding both alternates for the bid. Um, so my recommendation would be to award the bid with alternates one and alternates two to Eastern General Contractors. Their base bid was 101880 Their alternate one, which... Uh, didn't bring the whole contract, but I'm pretty sure it was a, a water fountain. Um, and then I think alternate two was screening, I think. Was what? Was the screening. But I will confirm. So their bid with, with both alternates is still less than the base bid for anyone else? Correct. So the price, the, the, the bids came in very well then. They did. They did. 
Yeah. So if there's anything that we need for furnishing or stuff like that later on, how did you how how was it written up? Was it allow for stuff like that? Um. Yes. Okay. For in the restrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So maybe you know at least getting the paper <laughs> towels and stuff in there, um, mops and things for the closet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'll entertain a motion um, toward the restroom construction to Eastern General Contractor base bid and Alt 1 and Alt 2. All right, I motion we award the contract to Eastern General Contractors Inc. out of Springfield, Mass. Base bid, alternate one and alternate, or alternate two, both. and both. both. Yeah. Okay. I and that, yeah. that's pretty good. We didn't think we were going to. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no, and, and you checked with the uh, recommendations? References, yep. Yep, references. Good. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Tree zero. Thank you. Good. Now we'll have bathrooms. And they're going to take down the old one also? Right in the same place, yep. Okay, good. All righty. Next up, um, select board updates. Um, personnel committee meeting just before this one. A lot of discussion, no decisions. All set? Mm -hmm. Nathaniel? Um, <clears throat> I was wondering about using ARPA money to help out some of the town rec sports teams. Um, it's been a real hard couple of years with the pandemic for them. A lot of the fundraising activities that they would normally do, they haven't been able to do. Um, things like the basketball tournament, which usually supports the, the baseball team, um, hasn't happened the last couple of years because of the pandemic. Um, in addition to that, the um, scoreboard at the Sunderland Elementary School has now, I think, six lights out or something like that, and it's getting really hard to be able to actually read the score off of it, um, <laughs> which, you know, kind of what the scoreboard's supposed to be doing. Um, I was just wondering, get the ball rolling on us thinking about maybe using some ARPA funds to get some of those things short away. Um, seems in line with what ARPA funds are supposed to be for, is to do that kind of thing. Um, so I figured I'd bring it up to the the committee and get to have some, get to have somebody give us a quote to do it and we can get it done or request the money okay, okay. so if i had jim or ben brush or something like that put a request in that would be the the route to go there mm. cool okay. yeah okay. just i will talk to them about that then talk to jim ewan about that yep okay we'll do thank you um so i have a south County EMS Wednesday night, so we'll be going over our budget. Um, last Thursday, we talked with South County Senior Center. Um, so the good news, the good news is that the participation in South County Senior Center has more than doubled, right? Has more than doubled over the last year. Um, the, I, I, it doesn't look like, I, I think it's been one of the things that we identified is that it's, it's very difficult right now, um, not knowing what, what's going to happen with the location. And so right now we, I would hope we stop talking in year to year term, but we start looking at five year. Um, Cause I, I don't see anything happening long term in Deerfield or the Sunland or Whiteley in, in less than five years. So our next, while I'm not totally dissatisfied with, with our arrangements right now, it is, it's not the best having some some services being offered in the 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 Pope John Paul 
rec center and then some over here um i, I like the fact that we're we're in, in both towns I, and and we're actually in whiteley also that's a good thing but we kind of they the senior center needs a home so what i i think um deerfield has had some money set aside they, they got a couple other things but according to what trevor was saying the other night is that it looks like um we're going to get together and view the congregational church next to the deerfield town hall to see if it will work as a senior center at least temporarily so and 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 i kind of think it's important because right now we're paying um about twenty eight hundred dollars a month for the two locations that we have the the um, pope john paul center has asked for additional cost because of when we use it because we use it three times a week and um you know the energy costs are more light costs heat costs and so he asked for a few more dollars and, and and i i think that that's a you know in line with with that all the what we're using right now that being said um i think we'd be better off if we just had one main place that we can work out of so if 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 it's something that the congregational church doesn't work um then we are being prepared to write an rfp to put an rfp out to look into three towns for some place that we could use all together and, and again and in 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 but i think also that we have to start looking and, and if and we need to put it out there that we're looking for a place for five years and and I, I think it'd be very hard for somebody that owns a business to keep, you know, doing one year, one year, one year. And, and I don't think that, that it doesn't help us, it doesn't help them either. Because we could may think, we may know, we may not know that we need to be there for five years, but all of a sudden we're in a place for two or three years, and we think we got a fourth and fifth year, and all of a sudden person, well, I got a tenant that's, I, I don't want to, so there's a lot of ambiguities so i think that's what we're, we're going to do that's what we're starting to do and and to to go forward the 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 bad thing um if you're looking at dollars and cents is when we look when we look at the budget it appears that the budget is going to be going up um and the reason it's going up is because of the ser the additional services, the additional um, things that we're trying to do at the, the senior center, so there's going to be a little bit of additional time. There's going to be some, you know additional time for some, and part of it also is with the the um, the agreement. And we work under the Deerfield uh, personnel bylaws, and about their increases for salary and stuff. That that is something that we really can't. Do a whole bunch about but is it's actually expanding this the services for the seat the our senior population um and and what we've done over the last couple years specifically over the last two years is we've taken a lot of the the way we we get a significant amount of gr funding from grants and I don't think we've ever shown our towns how much money we get from grants. And so we're going to start showing that in this year so people will know that. Um, so our finance committees will know that and, and our town meeting people, everyone will understand how much we're getting for, our, for grants. So that, that's kind of important. So we're, we're going to start doing that um, and we're going to be expanding some programs. So. You know we got we got that to look forward to and we 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 voted on our we voted on our budget so jeff will have that shortly if not already right okay the next thing i'd like to talk about is um the other day we had the passing of an individual that influenced many of our 
our residents lies over to her 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 tenure working in the town of Sunderland as principal principal of frontier and as superintendent Marty Barrett passed away unfortunately um, at a very young age of 71 um, talking from a I, I've, I've known Mar Marty for, for many years, um, but I think sh she did some re remarkable, very remarkable things. It's very hard um, to, to live and work, and especially as a superintendent and principal in the town that you live in. Marty did that. Um, Marty raised her children with her husband in that same town. Um, and I can relay one of my true beliefs of Marty. Um, and when she became superintendent and principal at, at Frontier, contract negotiations, which Nathaniel and Crystal will learn when we ever do a school Contract negotiations between um, administration and faculty and administ administration town, the select board, can sometimes get bogged down in a lot of minutia and personalities and stuff like that. Um, but when Marty was superintendent principal, it was actually easy. And and I, and you know, we, we, they always fight about, you know, we always have these long discussions about, you know, increased salary increase and step increases and, and all of that, that kind of stuff. But a lot of time negotiations get tied up in minutia, um, stuff that <laughs> it's hard for us to understand sometimes because we don't, most of us aren't teachers and we don't work in the schools and whenever I was on a, the negotiating team and Mar Marty's was, was a principal or the superintendent I can remember as a thing the the union side the teacher side would um, look at Marty um, and the chief negotiator for the school side would, would look at Marty and say, well, Marty and I will discuss this. Um, and we just moved on. And we didn't worry about it. Now, um, and what did it mean is that on the school side, we had 100% trust that Marty was going to do the right thing. And from the, the teacher side, it's saying that they had trust that Marty would do the right thing. And what was the right thing with Marty is that we she always put her children, because they were her children, her students, was always, and she always did what was best for her students. And, and we all knew that. So it was very easy, relatively, to have a contract negotiation when Marty Barrett was there. I, I will always remember that. I and and their life. She was teaching me um, life lessons when I was in my fifties. So I'm like to offer my condolences to Marty family, um, her husband and her her children and those that cared about her. Marty made an impact on all of us to, that got to know her. Um, and I just amazed that someone could do little things that meant so much every day. So I'd just like to offer a moment of silence and reflect on Marty and her legacy that she's left with our children and our towns.
Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Jeffrey? Um, no, no updates. Happy 2023. Hit the ground running. Um, I guess the one update is next week is the uh, Mass Municipal Association Conference. So um, I will be there. I think Crystal and Tom are going to be there. Nathaniel, you're not going, right? You're not able to? Um, Maybe I'm Saturday. still working on trying to make that work. Uh, I might end up just coming for Saturday if I can't make it. Uh, We'd love to have you for as much as you can make it. Um, and <clears throat> I will be, I was selected for jury duty on Wednesday. So, uh, and Monday we are closed. So I am going to have the shortest week possible. Um, but a busy Tuesday. So yes. uh, hopefully I will be in Wednesday and they won't need me. But um, that, that's my updates. Okay. Anything else? Okay, without hearing anything else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion we adjourn. Seconded. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn this lovely meeting. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, we have a motion made, seconded, and duly voted 3 0 to declare us out of the meeting at uh, Declare us out 731.